Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to talk with you about filtration and filters and what is the best filter for your aquarium setup. You've lots of choices out there, right? Everything from sponge filters to hang on backs to canisters to sumps, under gravel filters. I mean, there are lots of systems out there, even tanks with no filtration, but a lot of plants doing the work along with a cleanup crew. What's the best way to go? What's the best way to go for your tank? Let's talk about that right now. So I have just about every kind of filter uh, that you can imagine, except for the under gravel, and I don't have any tanks that are filtered only by plants and a cleanup crew, like shrimp and plecos and quarries. Uh, but I do have uh, several canisters I'm using. I do have uh, I do have like an FX6 and a Sun Sun that I'm using currently, uh, canister filters. I'm using a sponge filter in a tank. I have several hang on back filters and some of those internal filters from Expertmatic. But what, what's, what's the best? And if I, had to, if I had to look them all over, it really depends on the kind of tank that you have and of course the kind of fish that you have. If you're gonna have a heavily stocked uh, tank full of cichlids, let's say, that are producing a lot of waste and need a lot of food, you need a lot of water turnover. And in that case, I, I would strongly encourage you to consider something like a canister filter. A canister filter turns over a tremendous amount of water, uh, creates a good uh, water circulation, which is good for a lot of reasons, like oxygen, spreading out the oxygen, things like that. And, uh, and, and it's just good for, for heavy waste type applications. It's probably uh, surpassed only by a very, um, uh, you know, a good sump system that that is pumping, you know, 1,500 uh, to 2,500 uh, gallons per hour, you know, just circulating that water. Uh, something like that also can work very, very well. So if you have, uh, if your plans are for a heavily stocked cichlid tank, uh, really consider uh, first, you're gonna have to go with a larger tank, 75 gallons or more, and consider putting uh, dual filtration on it, uh, two hang on back filters or a hang on back filter and a canister. That way something's always running while you're servicing the other one or if one breaks the other one can handle the load and there's always some circulation going on and you have backup and redundancy which I'm very big on. Now let's say instead you're going to go with a smaller fish, maybe a community tank, uh, something like that, uh, something that doesn't uh, that you don't want to have a tremendous amount of water movement in, then you might want to consider something like a hang on back. In my case, I'm using a Marineland hang on back filters, but also in a very small tank, uh, like you see here in this uh, small Pleco tank, I'm using a very small, uh, small hang on back filter. And uh, you'd think, well, gee, what, what, what can this little hang on back filter do? Well, take a look here when I rinse the sponge, what comes out of it. It actually cleans up a tremendous amount and uh, it's working very hard in a tank full of uh, little pig pens which are plecos. Uh, they produce a tremendous amount of waste and when people tell me that they're going to include a pleco in a cleanup crew, in my mind there's always a trade-off because they do produce a lot of waste. So uh, certainly in a uh, maybe a 40 breeder, uh, a 50, a 75 uh, that you want to turn into a community tank like the tank behind me, uh, consider something like a, um, a hang on back filter and always go with the rule of two, try and use two if you can. And again, the backup and the redundancy is always important in case one fails. In your smaller applications, let's say you wanna have a, a 20 gallon tank with some neons, a few tetras in it, you know, a you know, sponge filter, producing some surface tension breakup, some oxygen, right, with some bubbles and, and uh, uh, not really producing a lot of water movement that would be a good choice. Uh, even in a better tank, let's say you have a, a 10 gallon or a five gallon, a little better tank, a sponge filter is not a bad way to go because it's not gonna produce a tremendous amount of movement, which bettas don't like, but you're gonna get the benefits of, of, of uh, you know, cleaning and also oxygenation, right? With the other, the other choices also are also gonna do that. Now, certainly in your bigger, bigger, you know, your bigger tanks, your, your 125s on up, uh, certainly consider a sump. And very often people are intimidated by a sump. They're afraid, they don't want to have a, a drilled tank or they're, they're uh, 
afraid of the plumbing. I'll tell you, it's a great learning experience. It's a great adventure. I've been through it a few times and it's actually uh, very satisfying once you get it dialed in. Uh, it adds water volume, which of course dilutes pollutants better. It creates a more stable ecosystem because of the extra water volume and it turns water over tremendously. So it's uh, for a larger tank, I don't think you can really beat a sump filter. And in my case, I have the sumps backed up by uh, you know, strong canister filters that are um, you know, moving upwards of 300 to 500 gallons, uh, gallons per hour. So um, dial it in, look at the application. Like first, ask yourself, what kind of tank do I wanna have and what kind of fish do I wanna have in that tank? And uh, how many of those fish do I wanna have? And the messier the fish, the bigger the fish, the bigger the tank, you work yourself, you know, you're, you work your way up the sort of hierarchy of, uh, of, of, of filtration, starting with your, you know, your sponges on your smaller applications and then working your way up uh, through the hang on backs, the, the, uh, the canisters and ultimately the sump filtration. I will say that of all the uh, uh, filters that I've mentioned to you, those are all, they're all great. They all do a good job. I've been very happy with all of them. It really comes down to um, how much water movement I want going on and how messy are the fish, how well stocked is the tank, and, uh, and do I like the aesthetic, the look of the filter? Is it gonna be an eyesore? Personally, I don't care too much for the internal, the look of internal filters. When Expertmatic went to a black filter, that helped uh, a bit, you know, a clear case with a black sponge inside, that helped, uh, but don't really like uh, a filter that takes up that much space inside the aquarium. So uh, I'll probably end up in my community tank uh, bringing over the, the hang on back uh, that is in the tank next to it, bringing it over to the community tank and taking the internal filters out and putting those in other tanks. So, uh, you know, there's gonna be some changes going on in the fish room, uh, more along the lines of the aesthetics, like what, what do I like to look at when I look at the tank and is the filtration uh, distracting or taking away from my enjoyment of the fish, something to consider. Okay, so those are some tips. I'd like to hear your questions in the comments below. Go ahead and uh, ask away. I'll try to get to as many as I can and I'll see you on Saturday. We're gonna go ahead and start up again with the Cichlids and Coffee live stream Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. I hope to see you there. And if you like the content of this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that bell, the thumbs up. Let YouTube know something good's going on. Let's go ahead and get through 50,000 subscribers. And if you'd like to support the channel, become a member of the Garage Gang and become a Patreon uh, supporter, monthly supporter. Details are in the description. Thank you, my friends. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.